guys, JK Tabletop Wargames, and today we are looking at how to play Bolt Action 2nd Edition. So you are going to need the Bolt Action Rulebook, some order dice, pin markers, measuring tape, some normal D6 dice, and obviously your models like men and tanks. So without further ado guys, let's get straight into how to play Bolt Action. Okay, so one of the main aspects of bolt action is the order dice. Now, this is how you activate your units. So these order dice go into a dice bag like this, and they are drawn out randomly. Um, so there's no I go, you go system in bolt action. It's all uh, random activation. And once one of these order dice come out, you can assign it to a unit on the table and decide what you're going to do. So firstly... On the order dice, you have different orders. So let's go through them quick. So a fire order is where your men stand still and fire. A run order is where you can move your men at the double. An ambush order is where you can put your guys on ambush. So basically they can sit there on ambush and wait until um, an enemy unit presents itself and then they can uh, start firing at them. So it's almost like a little trap. Um, a down order is where if you are being fired at, you can elect for your troops to go down, which makes them harder to hit, a lot harder to hit. Um, a rally order is where you can rally off pins. So we're going to look at that in a bit. The more pins you take, you're going to be needing to rally those off. And then the last order is an advance order, and this is where your men make one full move and then they can fire. But obviously you will receive some penalties for moving and shooting at the same time. So you have as many order dice as as many units as, as you have. So if you had 10 units per side, you're going to have 10 order dice on each side. So I've just got three for the Americans here and two for the Germans, just for a little demo. So that's how the order dice work. Let's look at the um, different orders in action. So, once you'd set up a deployment and you're ready to go, basically you draw blind a dice. We've picked out an American one, and I'm going to assign it to this squad of infantry here. So I'm going to give them a fire order. So I find fire on the order dice, and then I assign it to that unit. So I'm just going to put it there, and then these guys are going to fire upon the Germans by the barn. And that leads us on to shooting. So let's have a look at how shooting works in bolt action. So every weapon has its own stat um, and it has its own range as well. So for this demo, I have one, two, three, four, five men with rifles and an NCO at the front with a submachine gun. Now rifles in the game all get one shot. So that's going to be five shots, so five dice, each for one dice for each man. The SMG that the NCO has gets two dice, but it's got a shorter range. So I pick five dice. There's three, four, five. And then the first thing we do is work out what we need to roll to hit the target. So we start on a base of three in bolt action. So you need a three to hit, a three or more, but then it's modified. So if the Germans were at long range, then it would be a minus one modifier. So even though they're at short range, let's just say they're at long range. So rifles have a 24 inch range. So let's just say they're just within that. So we're on a three, they're at long range. It pushes it up one, so they've gone to four now. So we need a four and they haven't got any cover. If there was cover, it pushes up It pushes up one more again. So you'd now need a five. If the unit had gone down, you, that is then a plus two. So let's say they needed a three. They're at long range four, and then they've gone down five, six. So you would need sixes to hit. But in this case, we're just saying they're at long range. So it's only a, a plus one modifier. So a three, long range, four. And then what we do is we roll those dice. Obviously we say to our opponent, my guys are firing upon those. We've worked out what we need, we need fours. 
So roll the dice. And we have only scored two hits. So we scored two hits. Now, any hits scored, we now need to see if we kill any men. So you take those two dice and you're going to roll to see if you knock out any of the um, enemy troops. So, regular troops are killed on a 4+, plus, and veteran troops are killed on a 5+. plus. Let's just say that the Germans are regular, so they're going to be killed on a 4+. Plus. But before we do that, very importantly, every time a unit is hit, it takes a pin marker. So we put a pin marker next to them. That is because we, we, we managed to hit. If I didn't roll any fours, then they wouldn't receive a pin because we didn't hit them. But we've hit them, so they're pinned. And now we take our two dice, and we know we need fours to kill because they are regular. So we roll our dice, and we haven't killed any. But let's just say we rolled a four and a one. So we've, we've managed to kill one guy. So you take one guy off, that you want to and away you go. Let's say you roll a six when rolling to wound or kill. If you roll a six you can then roll that dice again needing another six and you can pick whoever you want. It's called exceptional damage. So if I, I roll to wound I roll a six right okay I get to roll that again yes I've rolled another six I'm going to choose the MG42 machine gun so I can choose the guy I want want to pull out. So that's something to remember. You you know, that's a way of getting rid of big threats. So that's how shooting works in um infantry wise. We'll take a look at tanks in a bit, but that's um the basics of shooting. So, this time round, let's say we pull a German dice. And we're going to return fire. We're going to return the favour and fire. If I can find fire. It's on there somewhere. There it is. So they're going to fire back. But it's different because they have a pin marker on them. So they need to take a test. So we roll two dice. They are regulars. So they are going to need a nine or less. So we roll two d6. And we need a nine or less in total. Four, five, six. So they've passed because it's nine or under. And every time you pass a test like that, you remove a pin. So the pin's removed and they can act normally. Now, if they failed that order, they would just go down. You can't do anything for the turn and they go down. So they're going to miss a turn. But because they're down, they're going to be a lot harder to hit for the enemy. So let's look at movement. I don't really need to go into too much detail, but basically if I assigned an advance order to this unit, I can move them six inches and then fire. So they would be able to move over the obstacle, move up six inches, and then I can fire. But the difference being when I fire is that I would need a three. We're saying they're at long range just for this demo. So I'd need a three, a four, and I moved which would then push it to a five. So you do get penalized for moving, but obviously you're going, going to need to move in the games that you play. And then a run order is basically moving at the double. So instead of six, you can move up to 12, but you cannot uh, fire. But that's a good way of, of getting up the table uh, to grab objectives, etc. Just briefly, if we're firing an SMG, let's say the Germans are now within range. He's got 12 inch range and an SMG gets to roll two dice. So you'd had five dice for the rifles and then plus two dice for the SMG. Okay, let's talk about mortars. Mortars in bolt action are good fun, I think. So let's say we've pulled out another American dice and we're going to give the mortar a fire order. Now, mortars have to range in because, you know, they're a mortar, they're, they're firing up. So let's say this mortar is ranging in on the German infantry. 
Now the first time the mortar fires, it needs a six to range in. So we'd roll the dice, no, nope, a five, we missed. But the second time round, it gets one easier. So we'd need a five, but only if our opponent hasn't moved or we haven't moved. So let's say it's next time round and if the Germans come out first, they're obviously gonna move because they don't want to make it easier for our mortar to hit them. But let's just say we get lucky, we pull out an American dice, we give it a fire order and we know this time we need a five because the Germans haven't moved and we haven't moved. Let's just say we got a five. Yes, we've hit. So, now we work out how wounds work with mortars. Okay, so our mortar has hit. Now, this is where templates come in to effect. Um, I haven't got one to hand, but just to show you, we look at the HE value of the medium mortar, which is a two. So if I come to the rule book quickly, you can see under two, it's got a plus two penetration and it does D3 pins. We don't need to worry about the hits versus targets in buildings for this. So we use a two inch template. You'd put the template over the top of the guys and see how many guys there are. So let's say three of them, it covers three of them. We then roll three dice with a plus two penetration. So normally we need fours to kill these guys, remember? But now we take it down by two. So we need twos, anything but ones. So we'd roll the three dice and we're rolling three dice because the template covered three men. So with that plus two penetration, we only need two pluses. And we've killed all three of them. So that would be three guys removed, a pin on the unit because they have been hit. Now the other thing, if a unit takes half casualties from one round of firing, it needs to take a morale test. So the unit would take a morale test with a pin on it. So they're normally a nine as they're regulars, but they've got one pin on them. So it goes down to an eight. So they need an eight or less to stick around. Six, seven, eight. So they just stick around. Okay. So you can see that mortars are quite effective, but it's hard to, to range in. And the other thing is, once you're ranged in, because you, you managed to hit them, you're now ranged in. So if these targets don't move, you're gonna hit them on a two plus now. So the hard bit is to range in, but once you ranged in, it's, it's really easy to then pick people off, especially with that template, template sorry, and the plus two penetration, it's, it's really handy. Let's look at assaults now. So to assault a unit, the unit assaulting must take a run order. So you can't advance, fire, and then assault, etc. You have to give the unit a run order. So we'll give this unit a run order, which means they can move 12 inches, up to 12 inches. And that's enough to get them into contact with the Germans coming out the barn. So just for this demo, they're all making contact. Then, assaults are really, really simple. Basically, we roll one dice for every man in the unit. So we've got five guys and an NCO, that's six dice. We are rolling first because we're the attackers. So three, four, five, six dice. Now, you don't roll to hit, you just roll to wound straight away in assaults. So, we know we need four pluses. So any fours are gonna kill. So we roll the dice and we've got two sixes. Now, exceptional damage still counts in assaults. So we can roll these again and any other sixes, we can choose who uh, is killed. And no, we didn't get any more sixes, but two men still die because we rolled, you know, above four plus to kill. So two Germans, so the German player just chooses rifle guys. 
and it's now the turn of the Germans to fight back. So if the Germans were completely wiped out, obviously they can't fight back. So the Germans have one, two, three, four guys. So they're going to roll four dice. But let's say that our Americans are veterans. So they, the Germans need five plus to kill, not four plus, because they're not regulars, they're veterans. So we take the four dice and they need fives to kill. And they have killed one guy. So we'll just take off a normal rifle guy. And then we work out who's won the combat. Well, obviously the Americans won the combat because they killed two guys and the Germans killed one. Any unit that loses in an assault is completely destroyed. So these Germans, they don't get another chance. They're taken off the board. They are completely destroyed. And the Americans have won that assault. So you can see that assaults are brutal and bloody. Now any unit that wins an assault gets to make a regroup move. So basically they can roll d6 and move that many inches. So we'll roll a dice, they can move one. So they would just move back a bit. So assaults, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Um, they can be quite dangerous because if you go in all guns blazing thinking you're going to take out the unit and you l end up losing the combat then uh, your unit will be destroyed so be careful. So let's talk about officers in bolt action. Officers now have a special rule where they can snap to, snap to action. So let's say an American dice is pulled and I assign it to my first lieutenant. Now he can activate another unit within his command range. So I think his command range is about nine inches. So what that means is using him, I can go to the dice bag and pull out another American dice and assign that to a unit. So I'm not waiting to see if my dice comes out. I'm using my first lieutenant to activate a unit. Now the higher up you go uh, in HQ, the more dice they can pull out the bag. So it's a really effective way of being clever and tactical and not having to wait for your, your order dice to come out the bag. Also, they give morale bonuses. So if this, sorry, if this, guy was here next to this unit and they had to take a morale test they would use the first lieutenant's morale of 10 instead of their own morale so it can be a very effective way of um, keeping on the table so just remember that okay let's look at tanks shooting so the Germans have received a, a dice out of the bag and they're going to give it to the tank. And we're gonna give him a fire order. Basically, tanks move like troops, obviously, but their movement's different. So most tanks move nine inches, um, and then they can fire as well. But he's gonna stand still and fire. So it works out the same as infantry shooting. So we need a three plus to start with, and then if our target has cover, so let's say the M10 was behind this wall, it's now gone to a four because it's one for cover. So he needs a four. So he's gonna roll a single dice for his main gun and he needs a four plus. He's hit with a six. Now, once you've hit your target, you need to work out whether you're going to pen the tank or not. So you take your gun's rating which for a Panzer IV is a heavy anti-tank gun, which is plus six. And you take the armor of the M10, which is an eight. So you roll a dice. Remember it's six, seven, eight, nine. So we've beaten the armor of the M10 by one, because remember it was an eight. So he has penned the tank. Now, if we had rolled a two and equaled the armor, then we would still roll on the damage chart, but it'd be a minus three because it's only superficial damage. But we've, we've rolled a three, 
we've managed to pen the tank. So now we roll on the damage chart and see what happens. So we roll a dice. On a three, I know that that tank catches fire. So you can see here, this is the damage result on vehicles. We rolled a three on fire. So we can see that we add one additional pin marker. So remember, the tank has already taken a pin because he's hit. Because any time a unit is hit, it always takes a pin marker. So he's going to take an, another pin for being on fire. So he's now on two pins. If we go back, we add one additional pin marker and then make a morale check for the vehicle. If the test is passed, the fire has been put out, place an order, uh, down order on the dice. Um, if we fail the, the test, then he's destroyed. So, let's say our M10 is a regular, which is a nine. So we need a nine or less, but he's got two pins on him. So that takes it down by two. So he needs a seven or less, to put out the fire, otherwise that vehicle is up in smoke. Four, five, six, he's passed, because remember it's, it's seven or lower. So he's passed. So remove one pin, you always remove a pin if you pass that test. The tank has put out the fire, and then you grab his order dice, and he goes down. So basically, he can't act for the rest of this turn. He's, he's gone down, he's lucky. Now if he had failed that test, let's say he rolled like that, 11, then boom, he's destroyed. Now the other uh, results are on a four, five or six, the tank is destroyed. So basically you're looking for four pluses uh, to destroy tanks. Um, and obviously you've got a crew stunned, which is just another pin, immobilized. So, you can see how the damage chart works there. Now, the other thing with tanks is they can fire their main gun and then they can choose to fire um, machine guns as well. We won't go into detail with that, but that's just something to be aware of. So for this example, the Panzer IV is gonna fire into the side of the M10. So we're going on the side armor. Now, the Panzer IV gets a plus one because he's shooting in the side armor, so he's shooting on the weak, a weak spot of the tank. So remember, the heavy anti-tank gun on the Panzer is a plus six, so it now goes to a seven, because he's getting that plus one for shooting at the armor. So he's got more chance of damaging that tank. Okay, the FUBAR chart. When you roll a morale test, so when you're trying to activate a unit that has pins on it, or you're rolling a test like we did with the M10 when he was on fire, if you roll double sixes like that, then you have foobard, and you then roll a dice on this chart. So if we rolled a one, we check the chart, a one or two friendly fire. The unit does not move and opens fire against a friendly unit mistaking it for an enemy. So it's really dangerous and this is definitely a fun part of the game. And then if you roll a three, four, five or six, it's panic. The unit executes a run order and must move as fast as possible away from the closest visible enemy unit. Um, so this is just a nice little gimmick that adds fun to the game. So remember that the foobar double sixes when doing morale checks, um, and you need to roll on this chart. So let's look at the down order. So these Germans have received their order dice, and they are getting a fire order, and they're gonna fire into the Americans on the road. But the Americans are reacting. So you say to your opponent, your opponent's saying, right, I'm opening fire against your guys, and your opponent, you say to your opponent, right, my guys are going down. So you find down on the dice, put it next to the unit. This now makes this unit plus two to hit. So we know we need a three. We're at pretty much close range for every weapon. So there's no modifier there. So we're on a three, they've gone down four, five. So we need fives to hit them. Let's say they had a bit of cover as well then we need sixes. So let's just roll some dice just for an example. 
So we need sixes. And we only scored one hit. So you can see by the target going down has made it so much harder to, to get hits against the, the enemy. So we only got one hit and then we would roll to wound. We were saying they were veterans so we need a 5+. plus. No. Nope. But the unit does take a pin because it was hit. But. If you go down, this unit cannot do anything for the rest of the turn, so it's a tough choice. Do you put this unit down and wait for further in the game, or have you got an idea that you, you want these guys in the fight? Then I wouldn't advise going down. But it's a good way of keeping squads alive, especially if they were holding an, an objective. Okay, let's talk about forward artillery observers. These guys are really handy, so they come by themselves, or you can have a couple of rifle guys with them to protect them. So let's let's see how they work. Basically, you need to give this guy a fire order. So let's grab the dice. So we give him a fire order, like so. He can then place an aiming point for his barrage, because that's what basically what they do they're calling an artillery barrage so let's just say and he has to have line of sight so let's say his aiming point is here now it doesn't happen straight away so he has to wait till next turn so let's say all the dice go back in the bag and before any dice are pulled out we then roll to see whether the artillery barrage takes effect. So, we roll a d6, which I'll do now. A 4. You look at the artillery barrage chart, and on a 4, you fire for effect. And then, obviously, you're going to read what it says. It says the area around the aiming point is plastered with heavy shells. Basically, what this means is anyone within... 6 inches plus d6, so you'd roll a dice, 6, add 1 is 7, so anyone within 7 inches is going to be caught in the barrage. So let's just say there's no one else close, it's just these guys that are going to get caught. So then we would roll a single dice, and on a 1 to 5, the unit is not directly hit, but it takes d3 pins. So we'd roll the dice. Yep, they take D3 pins, so a D3 is like a, a D6 half. So we'd roll the dice, they take two pins. So they already had a pin on them, they're now up to three pins. Now, artillery barrage can be a really good way of pinning units down. So let's say there was like three more units that got caught in that. You've pinned, put a lot of pins on a lot of units. But let's say they took a six. A direct hit. If they take a direct hit, we then place an HE template, a four inch, and anyone that's covered, so that would basically be this whole this whole unit pretty much, um, they take a plus four pen. So we count the guys there, let's just say there's three there, for example. Now they take a plus four pen, so anything but once is gonna kill them. You roll your dice. Yeah, that's three guys dead. And they then take D6 pin markers for taking a direct hit from our artillery barrage. So you'd roll the dice, they take four pins. So you can see that an artillery barrage can be devastating. But if we didn't roll that four at first and we rolled a one, you can see that it's different. So either the observer or the artillery battery has made a terrible mistake in the heat of battle move the aiming point token 3d6 in a random direction and then immediately resolve an artillery barrage as described. So you could end up taking out your own troops or vehicles. And then on a 2 to 3 it's delayed. So you're not always going to get that massive effect. Um, you know, you, you could wait a couple of turns. You're going to be waiting a couple of turns if it's delayed. But the other thing is be careful with your artillery observers, especially if they're by the cells because your enemy is going to try and take them out. Okay, and the last thing I'm going to talk about is small units. So if this unit here 
went down to two men because they've taken a lot of casualties. They now become a small unit, which gives them a minus one to hit uh, when they're being targeted. So if the Germans wanted to shoot at these guys now, they'd need a three. Let's say they're in cover. They need a four. They're a small team. They need a five. So you can see that small teams, it can help you out a bit. And that's the same with the artillery observer. It counts as a small team. So it's always harder to hit a small team. So bear that in mind. Okay, guys, let's just very quickly talk about point blank range. So if infantry get to within six inches of another infantry unit, they're at point blank range. So they actually get a plus one to hit. So let's say these guys were within six inches. They're hitting on a three. They're in cover four, but they're at point blank range. It would go back down to three. And then the other thing is the amount of pins you have on a unit will affect your firing as well. So let's say the Germans have two pins on them. They're going to hit these guys on a three. They're a small team, four, and they've got two pins, five, six. So they now need sixes to hit them. So you can see you take a minus one to hit for every pin you have. So it's going to be a lot harder to hit. So you really need to keep on top of the pins. And that's the next thing we're going to talk about, rallying pins. So how this works is we take an order test, but we ignore the pins we have. So these Germans are regular, so we need nine or less, ignoring the pins. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, we've passed. Now we can take off one plus D6 pins. So if we roll the dice, we can take off six plus the one is seven. So we could take seven pins off this unit, but basically, we've only got two, but we get to take those two off the unit. But obviously, the unit can't do anything else for the rest of the turn. But you rallied, and you're a fresh unit ready for the, the next turn. So there we go, guys. Just a small look at how to play Bolt Action 2nd Edition. I hope you enjoyed it. I haven't gone into all the special rules for each um, faction, special rules for tanks, etc. That's something you can look up in the rule book. But I hope this little guide has, has helped you to just see the basics of how it's played. There's loads of scenarios in the rule book to play. And um, yeah, I hope it's helped you out. If you have enjoyed this video, then make sure to comment, like and subscribe for more awesome videos. And I've been JK and I'll see you in the next video.